Naval aviation came of age a few months later at the Battle of Midway. And probably our, not probably, certainly our rarest artifact is this Dauntless that you see here. This SPD Dauntless bureau number, serial number 2106, is the sole remaining airplane to have flown from the Battle of Midway flown in the Battle of Midway. It was flown by a Marine Corps crew, which actually launched from Midway Island on 4 June, 1942. Wow. But Battle of Midway was arguably the most impactful battle of the war, short of D-Day. There were larger battles with greater bloodshed, but no battle held more significance, and it was a resounding victory for the U.S. and certainly naval aviation. We sank four Japanese carrier in very short order with this Dauntless dive bombers launching from U.S. aircraft carriers. Now, how did we come to this airplane? Pearl Harbor started uh, in December of 41. We fight the war with the aircraft we have. American industrial might built this newer, faster, better airplane. So. The older airplanes came back to the United States and were used as trainers. And I didn't fully appreciate this until I took over the job, but you'll remember when you and I learned to land aboard an aircraft carrier, carrier qualifications, we either did it off the East Coast or the West Coast. That wasn't an option in World War II because of the U-boat threat on the East Coast, the Japanese submarine threat on the West Coast. So the Navy trained its carrier aviators in Lake Michigan <laughs> 12 months a year. So this airplane flew for June 1942. Uh, it flew some other missions in theater later, but by 43, it's back in the States. And it's a trainer in Lake Michigan off of two training carriers there. And in 43, a pilot had a mishap and crashed this into Lake Michigan. And it spent six decades at the bottom of Lake Michigan as did dozens of other airplanes. There, there are dozens of examples of airplanes that have been recovered from uh, the lake. But as they were surveying the debris field uh, you know, in the 2000s, and they looked, and you can see up there just faintly, the numbers 2106, you and I call them bureau numbers, mm -hmm. serial numbers uh, for your audience, uh, they go, holy moly, that airplane flew on 4 June 1942. So we recover it. We left this witness mark, which is exactly what it looked like coming out of the lake, wow. minus a bunch of barnacles. Mm -hmm. And we left this witness mark here. And the small patches that you see represent the hundreds of bullet holes that the crew took on their mission on 4 June 1942. And I mentioned earlier why I think this is the best museum, aviation museum on the planet. You can touch history. These airplanes aren't behind velvet ropes or yeah. plexiglass. Folks can come in here and literally touch something that flew in the most consequential battle in World War II, certainly in the Pacific. Some people that may not be familiar with the Great Lakes is that those lakes are so big that they simulate the ocean with currents, waves, all the things right. that the carriers are gonna do yes. out there in the big ocean. And I know for a fact, as well as you do, flying aboard the ship at night right. in bad weather, in rough seas, it is not a fun thing to do. No, and you not. know what? They, even if they trained out there in Lake Michigan, I guarantee you they got plenty of training right. that prepared them for when they had to go out to the big yeah. sea. So anyway, we're very proud of our 2106.